I am an, an Indigenous education navigator in the LV program at Vancouver Island University, and we are sponsored through the MasterCard Foundation. Through our scholarship program, we do have an age limit of 35, but there are um, different requirements in each of our five different program elements. So through the scholarship program, our main element is our bachelor funded students. So as long as there is um, a community match um, and they're under 35, that's for that program. Um, our college transfer is students transferring in from a college that have two years or left or less. Um, we also have our youth in care scholarship. So as long as they have been in cumulative care for 12 months or longer. Um, our rural remote, just coming from a nation outside of our local partnerships, and our trades is a 10-month program or longer, and that is limited to 50 students or less. So for all of our program elements, there is an essence of matching. Um, and what that means is we'll establish a partnership, and that's usually with a nation. Um, and so we know that most nations have a wait list started and they already have students coming to our university. And in that case, for the one student that they are sponsoring with books, tuition and living allowance, um, we create a list and for their one student, we will then sponsor another student for that bachelor program for books, tuition and living allowance. Our overall goal is to enroll an additional 250 students, but also we are focusing on um, transition to employment, so working with students and um, assisting them to find and maintain their job, and also focusing on transition points um, in education. So we're looking at kindergarten to all the way to post-secondary, um, so grade four, seven, and 12, the transition. Well, from the perspective of a navigator, um, we work primarily with our students, um, supporting them in um, whatever way that the students need us to support them. But we also are focusing on enhancing the relationships that we already have in communities. So we work with um, education coordinators. Um, we communicate with other um, organizations in our communities and we communicate with chiefs and councils. Success is really a subjective word, so it's really important to define it. Um, we don't see like it, those hard quantitative numbers as you must have 250 of those students graduate for this program to be successful. Um, success is really unique to each student. So sometimes it might be that they came and enrolled and they found out that another program is better for them. So I have an example of I had two students come into the bachelor program. It wasn't really a program that was for them, but they enrolled in a healthcare assistant and they're just graduating this December. So I still see that as a success, though it's not um, a graduation in the LV program. So I think coming here and enrolling to 250 is, is our success. So enrolling 250 students in um, those respective categories that I mentioned earlier. So um, the bulk of our target of 250 is in the bachelor students um, and the rural remote and college transfer and youth from care and the, the lower enrollment is in the trades. We have working groups that were able to receive feedback from our community members and some of our navigators have monthly meetings with our nations to also gain feedback to, to understand how we're doing and um, what we could do better and we're also constantly meeting with our students and open to hearing feedback all the time from them as well. From the standpoint of our nations, yes, because um, 
they, they, most of them do carry a large wait list. And through this program, we have been able to alleviate the majority of the wait list issues through that matching mechanism. I think the initial challenge for, uh, for myself has been working with some communities that I'm not from. So it's establishing that relationship with the student. So it, it does take time and some, some persistence, you know, um, it's kind of like a stranger coming in. And so I'm always kind of letting them know that I'm there. And some students, they just don't need this support as much as others. So it's just that groundwork, it takes time. From a broad sense, I think Indigenous education is, is a journey um, that we create for ourselves, so our own definition, whatever it means to me as an Indigenous person, um, I would like to be able to create it and not have anybody else tell me what, or what education should look like for me. I think it is incredibly important for a lot of our students who are coming from communities um, and some of them have never been to post-secondary. They might be the first in their family to go to post-secondary. So um, this place can be pretty intimidating for some. And to start to establish the type of relationship where they can open up and share you know, some of the struggles they may be having at the university. So we're really able to tackle any barrier head on with them and advocate for them um, as much as possible. I think it really speaks to our ability to try to remove any barriers the student is experiencing. I am and have been working with a student right now who's been really struggling with her ability to come while she has um, some large issues with Fortis BC. Um, so through a lot of investigation with her, we have come to find out that um, another company has locked her into another contract that is charging her eight times the normal rate of hydro. So I've been able to advocate with her, with Fortis, with Access Gas, um, give her a voice with our chief and council. And we're, we've made a lot of progress. We've had her bill reduced significantly and working with her to get out of that contract so she can just, just focus on school and not having this major, major bill weighing down on her and wondering how she's going to eat this month. I, I really see us continuing to blur the lines of these transition points, so grade four, seven, um, 10, 12, and having more students transition into post-secondary and pursuing whatever um, program that they feel passionate about. And I would really love to see um, our people become involved in self-determination and moving towards self-governance. I really think we, we have created a strong foundation in our scholarship program and I see us continuing to expand um, into the transition to employment to really support our students as they are um, coming up to graduation and moving on and us expanding into the Q to 16, really focusing on those transition points.